Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee John McCarthy is going to stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 49 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to armbar and still. How's everybody going? To, how's everyone doing? I'm Seth Kelly, editor in chief of UFC 360 magazine. Really excited to follow and act like Chael Sonnen and the Ronda Rousey fight. So it's it's a little tough. Uh, but listen, I want to say thanks to all you guys, all the fans. Uh, without you, we wouldn't have a magazine. Uh, I hope you're all subscribers. If you're not, go to UFC.com/backslash/magazine. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce cover star of the new issue of USC 360 and women's bantamweight champion, Rowdy Ronda Rousey. She's back there, I promise. No, seriously. Any questions? Hi. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Is this working? What? Hi. Whoa. <laughs> Here's your cover. Wow. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I like almost lost my voice already. I was like talking for 14 hours straight yesterday, so I apologize. But uh, where'd that dude go? What am I doing? <laughs> I just followed somebody that led me up on stage. Somebody help me out here. Nothing. Alright. Uh, are you doing questions right now? Is this your thing work? Mine works. I don't know. Yeah. What's going on? How are you? Hi. Uh, I'm McKenna from Salt Lake and I was just wondering how old you were when you started MMA. When I started MMA, um, I was like, hmm, I was like 23 when I started MMA, but when I started Judo, my first Judo tournament was on my 11th birthday. So I count it from 11. Because, uh, I don't know, I think uh, judo and MMA is very close to the same thing for me. And I know they said no autographs, but will you pretty please sign my glove? Yes, yeah, come on up here. If you, if you say that cute, I can't say no. <laughs> Real up close, got it. So folks, time permitting, hi Rhonda. Uh, what up? Time permitting afterwards, Rhonda will be able to sign and take a few pictures depending on where she's going from there. But for now, just gotta keep going back and forth, try to get to as many questions as humanly possible. Ma'am, fire away. Hi Rhonda, my name's Elena. I wanna tell you you're awesome and inspiration to women. And I just admire how much you are. You're so strong, beautiful. And Thank intelligent, you. in my opinion, you are Miss America. <laughs> Thank you. But I really feel like the anti Miss America a lot of the time. <laughs> You're awesome. You're so awesome. I want you to come and inspire Boys and Girls Club of Barstow. It's only two hours away. On your way home one day, if you could please stop by our little town, there's a lot of wannabe fighters little kids that are doing different martial arts and the girls need to see you they need to hear you so sometime this coming year if you could please stop by barstow i have a business card i'm a board member of the boys and girls club we'd love to have you yeah i actually used to fight the the, the judo tournaments there that they they had uh, actually a bunch of times so and i pass through there all the time so oh yeah yeah bring me, we'll bring take me care a card. of you thank bring, you very much bring me a card i'll try and stop by 
And folks, they wanted me to announce 2.30 today, Rhonda, after she's done here, will be right there at that autograph booth for an hour. So if you want pictures and autographs, 2.30 with Rhonda right over there. Yes, sir. Hi, Rhonda. How are What's you? I'm good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm from the 209. I heard what he well, said. What? Yeah. I heard what he said, but I know this is my only chance. Will you please sign my daughter's thing? She's due in two weeks. Yeah, she's due in two weeks. Got to do it for the babies. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Hi, Rhonda. Hi. My name is Sandra. Hi, Sandra. And my question is, what do you want to be remembered for at the end of your career? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, I don't know. Like, the whole legacy thing is kind of like a new concept, but I, I would really like for Women's MMA to really survive me and keep going past me, and I would just like to be remembered as uh, one of the girls that really had uh, something to do with getting it started. That's all, I guess. Um, bigger picture stuff, we'll see later. <laughs> awesome. Also, one last thing. You know, the lines to get your autograph are ridiculous. They only allow 125 people, and after that, they close it. They did, that happened to me yesterday and today. This is my last and final attempt at trying to get your autograph. Can I please get my glove signed, please? please. <laughs> I can't, I can't say no, come here, come on. Hopefully, folks, this will be the final autograph request. She, no, she's in more high demand than any fighter we have here, without question. Uh, I'm probably gonna lose my job because she signed three of them, which I'm sure a lot of you would be really happy about, but you're gonna go right there. <laughs> then we see Joe Rogan more. <laughs> What's oh, on this side, right? Where are we? are over here. Yes, dear, what do you got? Oh, little person, what's up? I just want to wonder, why did you let go on the arm bar the first time you fighted? What did I watch? Why did you let go of the arm bar? I think, Rhonda, I'm, I'm her father. This is Renee, this is Jamila. My daughters, they uh, compete in jiu-jitsu. And we've watched pretty much all your fights. She's uh, asking about the Sarah Delay Delalio fight in Strike Force. Oh, Wars. that one! Um, the reason why I let go was um, it was one of those moves where I I jumped in and did it in the air, and her arm was popping out as she was putting her other hand out to stop herself. And the second that that hand touched the ground, all my body weight would have gone through the arm, and I wouldn't have been able to stop it. And as she was falling down, what, from what I heard, she was going tap, 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 like she was yelling it, and her arm was popping out, and she was super cool to me beforehand. And so I was trying to be nice. And then um, afterwards, she got up, she was like, I didn't tap, I didn't say tap, I said, I said, ah! <laughs> and I'm like, well, that still uh, counts as a verbal submission. But I was really upset about it, because I thought that was one of the coolest arm bars I ever did. And so after that point, I, I, um, I just pretty much promised that I wouldn't really wait, and I wouldn't be nice. and. Um, the, all the fights after that have kind of uh, been because of that girl and how she conducted herself that day. And, you know, I just, I can't really trust my opponents sometimes. So it's the way it is. Can I have an autograph and a picture? <laughs> Dude, You're that, too cute. Come here. Come here. I can't say no. Go on. They keep getting cuter. I can't compete. Side. Thank you, girls. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, my name's Erica. I'm from California. Uh, this is my first UFC Expo. Um, well, my first question is, how do you get so fit? And my second question is, can I be the last autograph request? <laughs> you have to be the bad guy. I'm never right. the bad guy. Um, Folks, again, 2.30. I know it's going to be a long line for Ronda over there, but we're really oh, yeah. trying to get as many but, uh, questions away. 
as it's humanly okay. possible. Is uh, the line already cut I'll, off? I'll do it for you. It's cool. But um, the fit thing, I just, I, I think um, it's just keeping your workout regimen from getting boring. Everyone always asks me what my workout schedule is, and I don't really know how to describe it because the reason why I got so sick of doing judo was all the training was the same all the time, and none of the trainers ever cared if we were having fun or not. And so um, I guess the way I stay in shape is I really try to mix it up and have fun, and if I'm really bored with one thing, then I'll go and I'll run up sand dunes, or I'll do like skimboarding, or I'll go to boxing one day, or wrestling another day, or grappling another day, and it's always something different. And so uh, when I get bored, I, I want to work out, and that's pretty much how it is. Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? What's up? I work for the fire department in uh, Downey, California. And, yeah. uh, we watch all your fights. And I was, they're going to kill me if I can't, but if I can walk up and give you a fire department shirt, oh, grab a quick picture, oh. that'll be awesome. <laughs> oh, bring it up here. Come on, man. It's cool. On the left side over here. What's up? Hi, my name is uh, Philip. Um, is there any ch is there any idea of um, nicknaming your armbar? Nicknaming my armbar? There's no nickname for it. It's called a jujigatame. And, and judo, that's how what's why I was called it. I used to call it a juji for short. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. I'd be like, I did a juji. I did another juji. I got three jujis today. So. And second, um, I want to get your opinion on the cyborg not. You know, fighting you on your weight class? Uh, well, I don't think it's a really big coincidence that three days after they announced out of competition drug testing in the UFC, she filed to be released. So um, that's the real only explanation that I could really give for her uh, sudden interest in leaving the company. Is, uh, is it okay to get a photo? Just, it's no, not against the rule? it's actually not, my friend, unfortunately. We gotta I'm stop sorry, it down man. there and try I'm to get a, to as many questions I'm a slave to the as man. possible. He's my handler. You, you gotta be cute and less than six years old, I think, at this point. I would yes, ma'am. Marker for this, by Hi, the way. Rhonda. My name is Veronica. Hi. I'm not gonna be able to get your autograph, but can I get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on over, come here, come here. No I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start paying people to ask questions here in a little bit. Yes, sir. What do you got? All right. I got you, John, because uh, he's three, but it's legit. You signed it yesterday. So what's better, the Olympics, that world stage, or the UFC? Because you get to go everywhere as well. Um, I think the, the Olympics is more pressure, okay. uh, but the UFC has more accolades. That's a better way to put it. No, that's so, cool. I just have to ask. Yeah, so I think that, that um, the Olympics is harder, but the UFC is funner. Really? Yeah. All right, thank you, Rhonda. Oh, well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just make me a pile. <laughs> there you go. That, that's the most effective way to do it. I got a pile now, all right? Cool. Hi, so, Rhonda. Hey. <laughs> My name is Ryan. I'm a fellow mixed martial artist um, out of Gracie Baja Burbank. And um, I asked you a question on, on uh, Metro PCS chat, or, and you actually answered it, um, but I think the rest of the fans should know what is the biggest difference between jujitsu grappling and judo grappling? Um, well, the only real difference between judo and jiu-jitsu is the emphasis. Um, I really think it's the same sport, except for judo is like 80% standing and 20% ground, and, um, and jiu-jitsu is 80% ground and 20% standing. And the, the difference between the ground game is the, um, in jiu-jitsu you have so much time that you can really be much more meticulous and you have to be much more careful and there's like much less room for error whereas uh, in judo you have such little time you might have like one or two seconds to make it work and so the transitions are much faster but there's also um, a, it, it's a lot less attention to detail because it's just you're trying to get it as quick as possible and you can afford to screw up because you're only going to get a couple seconds anyway and so I would say that the uh, jujitsu ground game is much uh, more it's much faster but more reckless and the uh, the, ju uh, the sorry the judo one's faster but more <laughs> reckless and the jujitsu one is more like um, meticulous and scientific I would say okay and one last question i don't want to disrespect john because he's working really hard but can i stand off to the side somewhere and wait till after yeah, put it in my pile 
All right, put it in the pile. Yeah. Got it. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> How about? Yes, yeah, sure. What do you got? Hey. Hey, uh, I have a daughter that's a huge fan of yours, and she stops people all the time that don't know anything about the UFC and, and just tells them, they're like, you know, Ronda Rousey's the champion, so uh, don't do anything. So I wondered if you could do me a big favor. She's not here. She couldn't come, but if you could just uh, say her name. Her name's Memory Claire, and just say that you are the champion. That would make Memory Claire? Huh? Well, Memory Claire, you are a champion. Thanks. No problem. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. What do you got? Hi, Rhonda. My name is Albert. I'm from San Francisco. And um, first, I want to compliment you on uh, your victory against uh, Liz Carmouche. I really liked how you pinned her in a case of Katame and just beat her head like a schoolyard bully. Yes, Katame. Oh, nice name drop. Thank you. Um, and my question is, will you be doing any judo semi uh, seminars in the future UFC Fan Expos? Um, to be honest, I haven't done any seminars since I started doing MMA except for one that was for charity for the D.D. Hirsch Mental Clinic. And it's really, really hard to find time. And um, it's, it's just kind of funny that before I, I really started doing MMA, a lot of people weren't interested in really any of my clinics at all. Or they would like bring me in to meet about clinics and then like totally disrespect me and just totally like take it off the calendar. And, uh, you know, it was just... Whenever I do clinics now, I'm not really doing it to make money or doing it for anybody's favors. It's pretty much just for charity. So um, we're thinking about maybe doing another one in, in July for um, Diana Prozak, who is one of my, uh, my sparring partners. She just uh, won a, a title belt in boxing, but the girl that she fought ended up uh, in a coma. And she has a little kid, and we wanted to run a, a clinic as like a fundraiser for her. And so... Um, that might be going on sometime next month, so just kind of keep your eye on social media stuff, and uh, we'll let you know uh, what we plan for an event for her. Thank you, Rhonda. No problem. Hi, Rhonda. Hey. Uh, my name is Brian. I'm from Southern California. Um, I was Lucky gonna, you. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of here on behalf of my mother. She's got some uh, some health issues, and uh, I guess what I, in a long-winded way, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, yesterday. Uh, well, Chael Sonnen today, he said, you're always going to have doubts uh, when you go into a fight. You're always going to have fear. And um, I can't remember who it was that said it yesterday, but uh, it was Chuck Liddell who said, never lose your confidence, no matter what happens, no matter what you're facing. And we just watched some video of you uh, with Liz Carmouche. She had you in that horrible neck crank. Your chin was like behind your shoulder. Um, I guess my question is, when you, when you hit something in training or when you're, fight, you know, when you're in, the, in the cage and you're up against something, you know, when you have that doubt, like, what do you draw on? Where do you, where do you find that cornerstone of strength to, like, take that step forward? Um, I guess it's just it's moments like that that really make you realize what your priorities are. Um, you ever watch the movie Gattaca when they're, like, swimming out? And the one guy was like, how did you beat me? And he was like, well, I didn't save anything for the way back. And in that situation, I just kind of, I realized that I was willing, I was willing to die to win. And there's no way I would ever tap out for a choke, and there's no way I'd ever tap out for a nut crank. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to find a way out of this or die trying. And, um, and it, it hurt enough to give up long before that, but I realized what was really important to me in that moment. And um, saving my face wasn't as important as saving my pride. <laughs> so I can't really say it was the most intelligent choice, um, but uh, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's a priorities thing. You just got to know what your priorities are. Had a girl. Thanks, Rhonda. Thanks. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Go ahead and book it for me, buddy. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. Um, you are definitely known as probably right now, except in my opinion, the best female fighter right now. What do you think lies ahead will be most challenging as you um, pursue this UFC career? Well, my biggest challenge is always the opponent that I have right in front of me. Uh, one of my mom's many sayings is, uh, nobody's easy until after you beat them. And since the fight in front of me is Misha Tate, then the biggest challenge in front of me is Misha Tate. Okay, and I don't want to disrespect him, but can I at least be guaranteed a pick and autograph over there? Next? Yeah, go stand in my pile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yes, sir. Um, just got to ask a quick question. If there was any guy you could fight in the UFC, who would it be? Everyone knows I would love to beat up Brian Caraway. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, before my question, I just wanted to say um, 
it's amazing how you've transcended this sport. Like you've gone beyond it. I do coach some high school girls basketball. The girls don't watch UFC. They don't know anything about fighting. They love you. They know who you are and they love you. And when you're having a bad day, this is big. Everything that's going on is big, but what you're doing is bigger. So when you're having a bad day, just remember that. But I wanted Thank to, you. absolutely. I wanted to ask a question a little bit out of ignorance. Um, kind of a, one, do you, first, do you spar guys and females? Yeah, I spar guys and girls. Uh, when it comes closer when I'm in camp, I, we have sparring partners that we have scheduled that we pay to come in for specific things for a specific opponent. But when I'm not in camp, I pretty much only spar guys. This is the ignorance part then. Um, when does size overtake technique? Like, I mean, I know you could kick my ass, but I'm wondering, like, when does somebody become so much larger when you're sparring or what have you? You know, because there is the male strength, upper body, et cetera, et cetera. When does size overtake technique, the whole gravity of the situation? Do you know what I mean? Am I, I um, might not be explaining it right. But. I think that um, with enough technique, you can overtake any kind of size, but the risk of in injury always increases the more of a size discrepancy there is. I mean, the, the main things that cause injuries, injuries are the... Um, the opponents are mismatched in size. There's too many people on the mat, or the um, the mats are, are bad, and people's feet or something are getting stuck, and you know the equipment's bad. And so, um, uh, I think that I personally think that I can beat up anybody in the world, but I might get hurt uh, against some people in the process. You know, so it, it's just it's riskier the bigger the person is, but it's always possible with good technique. Gotcha. Thank you. No problem. Thanks, Coach. Yes. Hey, Rhonda. Um, my name is Vance. I'm from the Fort Belm Indian Reservation, Montana. You just said to book the fight with uh, Cyborg, but would you fight her at 145? I don't have to fight her at 145. And I'm the one that has the belt. She's the one that should come to me. And I'm not going to be making exceptions or bending over backwards for someone who's a cheater in disgrace. I don't think that's the wrong message to be sending. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, John, you said you were going to start charging Per picture, yeah, how much? No, I'm saying I'm going to pay you guys to ask questions instead of ask for autographs. So. All right, here's, here's my, I guess here's my question then. Can you take a picture of me and Rhonda? <laughs> after, after we're done here, yes, I will. All right, all Thank right. you, brother. Hi. Hi, Rhonda. My name's Fran. Um, sorry. Uh, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I have a question. Um, when you fought Misha Tate, your first fight, and you were mounting her and punching her, why didn't you go for the TKO instead? Um, I didn't know how much time was left, and I actually thought it would be faster uh, to go for the armbar instead. And so I was purposely trying to hit her on, on one side of the head um, and put my weight to one side so she would pick another side to, um, to uh, what's it called, to turn towards? Was it to turn towards? No, it was like well, she was face down, right? I was mounted, right? And so um, she wasn't moving at all, so I purposely put one hand on the ground and put all my, hand, my weight on that hand. I was hitting her on the other side. So the only um, side that she could stand up on was the other one. So it was either she had to take the TKO or she had to pick that arm up to get out of that position. And so I just put her in a position where she would ha have to choose pretty much. And um, I just feel like that kind of like expedited the situation more than just trying to go straight for the TKO and struggling with it. Then I would put it in a situation where she could take the TKO or put herself in a position to be armbarred. So it wasn't like a conscious choice. It was just I left it open to her reaction. Okay. And my second question is this. I noticed you don't have any TKOs in your uh, right now as for your wins, but in the future for your fights, do you plan on that? I don't plan fights at all. Everyone thinks I'm making this up. I swear to God, I'm improvising every time I go in there. We plan the first exchange, and then after that, I'm just making it up. And then just, just sometimes I feel like um, the fastest way to do it is, the, is just go for the submission because um, going for the TKO is it's kind of left after the discrepancy of the referee. And I feel like the most definite way to win is a submission. And anything other than that, it's up to somebody else's judgment. And I just don't trust anybody else that much. And uh, no disrespect, but I drove all the way out here from California to see you, and it's my birthday weekend. So if it's possible, if I could get a picture off the side with you. Yeah, be yeah, get in the pile. In the right. pile. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, my question is, uh, how are things in the Ultimate Fighter house? Have you got into any arguments with Cupcake? <laughs> 
Um, to be honest, there's like so much that went on and there's only so much they could show that I'm convinced that everyone's going to think I'm crazy when they see it. And there's just, there's no way that you could really see the actions that warranted the reactions because there's just so much that happened that, um, yeah, everyone's going to be extremely entertained and I think that probably half of you guys will be saying half as nice things about me next year. Hey, can I get a picture off to the side? Sure, go for it. <laughs> Hi, Shay from Vegas. It's so nice to finally meet you. It's an honor. Um, Thank I was you. wondering, when you were growing up and like during your first judo fight and when you were learning how to fight, what was your inspiration? Who or what? Um, my, my mom definitely was. She, she already was a world champion in judo, and I just felt like that was what you were supposed to do. You know, everyone in my family, they went, we went to college, you're expected to go to college. My mom won the world championships in judo. I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to do that too. It was just one of those things that I accepted as being normal and uh, as being entirely possible for me. So yeah, my, my mom is always like my biggest idol. Well, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Rhonda, how are you doing? Good, what's up? Uh, I just want to tell you first of all that I love you and you're an amazing fighter. Uh, I'm a big fan. I Thank came you. all the way down from South Texas and this is my first time here and I just want to know what, what was your hardest fight you've gone through? My hardest fight? Um, it was actually my favorite fight and it was uh, the semifinals of the Judo World Championships in 2007 at the HBC Arena in Rio de Janeiro. And I was fighting, I, I'd only moved up into the division like six months before, so it was really unheard of for you to be new in the division and actually do well at the Worlds. And I was fighting the girl who was like, I swear to God, it was like seven feet tall Dutch chick. And um, we'd fought before and she did this one illegal move called a walking katami where you break the person's arm on the way down. The last time we fought and, um, and she got disqualified for it. And then the next time we fought, it was the semifinals of the world. She was defending her title. And um, she went and did the same move again, but the referee didn't see it. And so my elbow was already dislocated. And I had to like, pop it back into place. And then I was behind. And then like, in the, and it was in the Brazilian crowd. And they were all booing me all day because I fought the Brazilian girl first. And I beat her. And um, what's it called? I popped my own arm back into place. There's 20 seconds left. And um, my favorite throw in judo was the Sode Sura Komagoshi, which is one arm throw. And, um, she tried something at the very end, and I threw her with one hand with the arm that she just dislocated right at the very last second. And like the whole crowd went crazy and everything, even though they booed me all day. And um, it was like one of my favorite come behind matches, and it just felt like Rocky Four that the crowd that was hating on me in the beginning of the day was like on my side by the end of it. And um, yeah, that was one of my most difficult and favorite fights. Thank you very much. And can I join the pile over there? Yeah, get in my pile. Appreciate it. Yeah, just so you <laughs> folks know, we got about 10 more minutes up here, and then she'll spend about 8 to 10 minutes there, and then she'll be over there signing for an hour. So we're going to cut the question short so you can sign a few of those autographs over there. All right? Yes, sir. What's up, Ronda Rousey? What up, guy in the shirt? How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm a big fan, and I just want to ask you, since I don't know anything about fighting, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a silly question. If you could be an animal, what would you be and why? Ooh, I would want to be, I don't know how appropriate this is. Earmuffs, everybody, earmuffs. I would want to be a dolphin because dolphin, Bottle knows dolphins because they're kind of the top of the food chain. Sharks don't mess with them. And dolphins are one of the few like other species of animal that actually have like, I don't want to say it. Seriously, earmuffs, all little kids. Elephants have recreational sex and other animals don't, okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Also, if you need a personal chef, I'm up for work. And then, um, Actually, my, my next camp, we were looking into getting a chef because we discovered that I'm, yes. a, I'm a hazard to the world when I cook. Oh. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for you. Don't worry. I'm your friend on Facebook. Just look me up. I'll message you. Okay. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. You too. How you doing, Rhonda? I'm good. How you doing? I'm also from uh, South Texas. Uh, first things first, God, I love you. <laughs> Thanks. My first question is, uh, if from any other uh, organization, is there actually somebody that you actually want to fight other than Cyborg? Any other organizations? Yeah, any other the female fighters from different organizations. I mean, to be honest, I think that the UFC is doing a great job at uh, pulling all the best talent at the time in right now, and all the girls that I'm most interested in fighting are, are all in the UFC at this point. My second question is, what's the chances of uh, you ever calling out Gina Carano? 
Dude, I, I can't, man. The girl's like, she's my hero and my inspiration and the reason why I started doing this. And um, she's moved on a different part of her life. And if she ever wants to fight me, I will be honored to fight her. And of course, I would always love to. But um, I think that she's contributed as much as anyone could really expect her to. And if she wants to return to fighting, then then I'll be happy to oblige her with a fight. But if not, then I wish her the best of luck in whatever she's pursuing now. Uh, would you mind if I go to your pile over there with my brother who just was right before me? Sure, dude. Go for it. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Rana. My name's Tia, and I just want to say that you're my favorite and number one UFC fighter ever. Ever since um, <laughs> I've seen you watch Misha Tate, you've been my most favorite. And I, I recently just had surgery on my knee because I was wrestling at high school, and I, just a bunch of rumors were going around because the guys said that, like... They couldn't believe that a like a like a big girl couldn't wrestle, and so like I don't know rumors were going around and all, and I just want to just like and I kickbox too, and so I wanted to like wrestle for high school and all that, and so um, so two guys both fell on my knee, on my I'm knee went sorry. in. Sorry, it's all right. And I was just wondering to know like what would your advice be to me? Um, you know, when I, I tore my, my, my ACL right after I dropped out of school to train full time. Like right after I did it, I, pull, I tore my knee out and I thought it was the worst thing that ever could have happened. And um, I actually I spent that whole year just focusing only on my ground game. And that's really why I focused so much on arm bars um, at such an early time was because I had to spend a whole year, take all, that whole time away and do only ground stuff. And then when I came back into my throws, I had to relearn all the throws that didn't uh, use my supporting leg. And so I effectively doubled my repertoire of throws and uh, ended up with a really great, you know, Nawaza game, that's what you call it in judo, to, to complement my standing. And so if I was you, I would just spend all my time and energy and all the things that I can do. And then by the time you're healed, you're going to be way better and more well-rounded. You, you really can make the best of it. You just can't let it discourage you. Yeah. Oh, also, my mom's recording right here, and I always <laughs> wanted you to say, or wanting to know if you could say something like to me on the on the iPad. It was <laughs> Tia, name, right? Yeah, Tia. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you for one of the most insightful questions of the evening, Tia, and good luck with uh, with your knee injury. I know you can handle it. Okay. Thank you. No I love you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, Rhonda. Um, Hi. I'm Eli from uh, British Columbia. And uh, my question is, is uh, Nick Diaz is like my favorite fighter, and I just wanted to know, like, how did you end up meeting those guys and training with them? Nick and Nate, they reached out to me out of nowhere. I was actually, I was here um, to watch Manny fight, I think it was uh, Diego Nunes, and uh, Nate was fighting Cowboy Cerrone, and um, out of nowhere, they just hit me up, and uh, were like, hey, the you guys are gonna go train today, da da da. And I was I was already dressed to go train at the warm rooms downstairs. And then like, no no no, come come upstairs to the whatever the, the lobby, and we'll all go to Throwdown. And um, these guys never do media or anything like that ever. And just out of nowhere, they're like, yeah, let's do a media workout. And then we went to Throwdown, and then like I, I trained, and it was really really cool. And they split it up into three videos, and all of them ended up doing like 300,000 views a piece. And I was really struggling back then to try and get as much attention as is possible, you know, going and they really reached out to help me with no real incentive or anything at all. And so, uh, and I was already like a super fan at that point. So um, they've been like, they're, they're just absolute sweethearts and I've always appreciated their, their help and support ever since then. And uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't let the rep fool you. They're, they're, they're really a bunch of like cuddly teddy bears down on the inside. <laughs> they just look really mean. I'm a teddy bear too, though, but, you know, it's, it's all the fighters. The meanest ones, I think, are the nicest because, like, yep. when they're fighting, they don't have any mean left over, and you're just, you're just nice the rest of the day. <laughs> and then I guess I'll just like to say uh, Ronda Rousey is probably the hottest girl you'll see with cauliflower ears. <laughs> it's not a, a large pool of women, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank Thanks, Eli. Yes, sir. Hi, Rhonda. Name's Hi. Rudy from the 209. What up? Hi. What? What? Hey, I met up with you earlier at the shoe store, me and my wife. Uh, yeah, I saw. I remember the shirt. She's feeling bad. She's, She's feeling bad? She wants an autograph. Please. You put in my pile. Put in my pile. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll get to it. I will. Yes, sir. Hi. Where did your nickname come about? Um, honestly, 
when I first started fighting, I was like, I need a nickname, I need a nickname. And everyone's like, what about Rowdy? What about Rowdy? And I'm like, oh, no, Rowdy Roddy Piper already has that. I can't take it. And then um, they had a, a highest end, one of the places I did by grappling, had a grand opening of their new location. And Gene LaBelle is one of the, co the coaches there. And he was actually Rowdy Roddy Piper's grappling coach, wrestling coach back in the day. So Rowdy came to the gym for the... Uh, the uh, grand opening, and I went up to him and I asked him, I was like, I have my first amateur fight coming up, is it okay if I use your nickname? And I get to be Rowdy Ronda Rousey, he was like, yeah, sure, whatever, kid, have fun at it. And then uh, I, I didn't think he'd know it would actually turn into such a big thing at that point. So, um, yeah, I got actual permission from Rowdy Roddy Piper himself, and that's how the name came about. Thank you. Um, Thanks, yes. So Gina takes off to the movies after she's done with her career. Does that mean that the movies are going to be in store for you after you pull a career? Um, you know, I, I don't even know what I'm doing next week. I didn't even know why I was on the stage when I got up here. So if you're asking me for like several years in the future, I, I'm, a, I'm a terrible predictor. Uh, so if you asked me a year ago what I'd be doing now, I would, I would have no clue it would be this. So I, I don't know. We'll see. I, I'll try to let everything happen organically. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Rhonda, hi, Ray, uh, came from Texas. Uh, two things, my wife's a little jealous since you uh, came into the UFC, I've been a big fan. And what plays on your iPod? What, what songs do you have right now? Oh, right now? Um, I've been really into like Santa Gold and Passion Pit lately, but then uh, like with, lately we've been training, we've been putting on like 90s hip hop, Pandora, and so I've been having like a lot of random like 90s hip hop songs in there. Like, I, I, if you listen to my playlist, there's so many unrelated songs like in a row, it's just, uh, it's almost mind boggling. I just feel like good music is good music and uh, regardless of what the genre is, but um, yeah, I, I, I would say uh, my, my Pandora stations are 90s hip hop and indie dance. Cool. <laughs> Can I stand with the pile over there? Go on, get, get in my pile. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. How's it going, Randy? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm all right. Uh, you trained with Eddie Bravo. Has he awarded you any belt under him? No, I have no jujitsu belt. I'm a white belt in jujitsu, oh, okay. actually. Um, I'm totally unranked. So. Do you plan on pursuing your black belt under Eddie Bravo? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess I've never even pursued a black belt in judo. Like, the way that I found out I got my black belt in judo, we were driving in the car on the way to practice, and my mom looks at me and she goes, you know you got your black belt, right? And I was like, um, no. She's like, oh, well, you did. And I didn't even have a belt, and then, then somebody else just gave me their belt. Like, it's just, I feel like all the belt does is it just holds your gi together, and it's not really important to me. I love going and learning from Eddie, and um, I'll always try to absorb as much as I can from him, but the color of what I'm wearing around my waist really has no importance to me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, big man. Hey, Rondo, after Wait. this, can you, come, can you come and join my dad's booth and take a picture with me? Uh, yeah, just jump over there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Rhonda? <laughs> um, well, you tell him that. Uh, my name is, is Clifford Green. We live at oh Bally Bally sorry, Bally sorry, I didn't see you at all. Uh, What's going on? Uh, we live at Bellingham. Uh, my dad asked me about him, yeah, ma marry you. <laughs> <laughs> then I can kiss you a cheek. No, that's be okay. I'm not marrying anybody today, uh -huh, okay. but I, I appreciate the offers. They're always flattering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a busy, I'm really, I'm a, I'd make a terrible wife. I can't cook, I can't clean, I'm always out of town. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm a really inconvenient person, and it's all about me and my career right now. So I'd be, I think I'd be a horrible in a relationship. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I got a question for John, John Alex. What's up, buddy? Um, you put a gear out of that on my nails. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in it. Say that again, bro. Uh, um, I got a question for you. Then you from a uh, I'm in it. See how it? Hey, you know what? As soon as Rhonda's done, I'll come meet you over there. You and me, five minutes. Yeah. All right. All right. Deal. Yeah. Good. All right. I'll see you when we're done. About five more minutes here with Rhonda. Yes, dear. Hi. Um. So, you and GSP are my favorite fighters, 
So I'm just wondering, what's the deal with you and GSB? Well, when he says that he likes to watch women fight, then I will say that I like to watch his fights. I have one more question. Um, I'm about to leave, so is it okay if I get a quick picture with you? Yeah, sure. Um, right there. Little kids in front. If you're a little kid or a chick, it's like the Titanic over there, okay? Women and children first. All right? Yes, ma'am. Um, hi, my name's Jade, and hi. I just wanted to know, do you have any other passions besides UFC? Is there anything there on, that you're interested in? That I'm interested in? Um, I, I mean, I really like skimboarding. I go like every morning. I, I like going, like being at the ocean every morning. I, I'm from Venice. I kind of like grew up being a beach baby. And so um, like surfing, skimboarding, paddleboarding, anything like that. Um, I'm really, really big into it. Can I please have like a really quick hug? Sure, come here. <laughs> All right, yes, ma'am, fire away. Hi. Hey. Um, I'm new to the UFC, thanks to my husband. Um, I have a daughter who's 16. I also have a granddaughter, but that's not hers. My son's 21, so I have a <laughs> six-month-old baby granddaughter. Um, knowing that you were the first female to sign with UFC, knowing that you're such an inspiration to the younger generation, like my granddaughter, how does that make you feel? Because you seem like you're such a humble person. Like, how does that affect you like in your everyday life? I'm sure a lot of people would disagree with you about me being humble, but <laughs> um, I, I, honestly, I, I'm kind of torn about it because it's, I feel like no one else is ever going to be good enough for my kid, you know, and it's like you hold, you want so much of the best things for your kid and I, it's like impossible for me to be perfect, you know, and um, I feel like I can't really control how, how things are put out there or how they're perceived and for my little sister, who is my, my real responsibility to be a role model to, if something comes out that's I, I, I don't like so much, I can sit her down and explain it to her. Um, but like for for all like the other little kids out there, like I'm trying my best, but it's like if you live a life of just constant exposure, it's impossible to, to keep up this persona of what you think kids should look up to. You know, there's no way that I can really maintain that for any uh, prolonged amount of time because I'm just out there too much. So um, I just have to try and be myself as much as possible and how it's like really conveyed to everyone else is, is out of my control. And so I'm really happy if, if, if I can do that service and inspire people and help them in any way. But I feel like if my happiness or identity was somehow linked to that, it's outside of my control and I never want my happiness to be related to something that I can't control. And so I'm trying my best, I am. <laughs> you're great, I just think that you're an inspiration because you're a beautiful woman and to be on the cover of you know, the magazine, I think you're gorgeous and I think that you are something, a positive role model for the younger generation of girls to look up to and aspire to. Thank you so Thank much, you. I appreciate that. All right, two more questions, one on each side. Yes, sir. Hi there, Rhonda, this is Troy from uh, Torrance, California. What's up? I just want to let you know, uh, first and foremost, that uh, my wife, my pregnant wife over there, who uh, used, used to not be a fan of the UFC, just watched you and is now a fan of the UFC. Um, so that's, that's thanks to you. Uh, my question is, uh, I read GSP's book and a lot of his mentality to stay on top is about fear. It's fear-based. What is your mentality to stay ahead and stay on top where, you know, you're literally at the head of the pack and everybody wants your spot? Um, I think it's just a lot of being insatiable and never really satisfied. I, I, I always want a goal to aspire to, but once I achieve it, I never really dwell on it that long. And I, I think it's just that I always feel like there's so much left to do, and I'm always scared of becoming um, um, complacent and contentment. And um, I, I really kind of try to avoid that and always stay hungry and always want more. And of course, you know, the fear of failure is always a driver, but the thirst for more is a good one too. And so I think you need a little bit of both. Thank you, Rhonda. And can we get into the pile, please? Yeah, pile on up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, our final question. Yes, sir. Hi, Rhonda. I'm Marcos. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi. And I see how quickly the sport is growing, especially in your division. How intimidating is that for you? It's not really intimidating. I'm really encouraged by the, the growth of the division. I don't want to be a big fish in the small pond. I want to be the biggest, baddest fish there is. Having a small pond doesn't make me feel better. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. I I'm going to give you this, too. Somebody wanted to present that to you. It's engraved with your name. Aww. And because you're wearing that shirt, we're going to give the final question to that young man there. All right. Hi, Rhonda. Uh, we were actually there to witness history, your fight. Um, my question is, when did that oh wow factor come into play when you're walking out, or did it even come out or use the zone din? Um, the wow factor. Uh, well, first when Joe first tried talking to me, that was kind of like not, it's, it's your most incomprehensible and intelligible moment ever, and they're like, hey, speak publicly to like everyone right now. And that was kind of like a oh, wow, you know? I, I don't see, I have like blinders on when I go in there, so the second it's over is when I, I see everything. And um, so that was kind of a wow moment, but then I was just like, you just reached that limit of how much you can really absorb, and I was just like officially overstimulated at that point. I was just trying to get through the rest of the day so I could go to bed. And then um, it became really wow when I actually watched the broadcast. Because, you know, I'm at these events all the time, I've fought a lot, I'm walking backstage a lot, so being in that environment isn't really so wow anymore. But actually watching the fight, like, um, as a UFC fight and seeing like, oh, this is like the backstage shots and this is like, you know, Joe talking about the fight coming up and they're showing the highlights and the interviews and then the build up and then the fight happens. Like sitting down and watching the program was what made it really wow to me and uh, it was what made it different from all the other fights because to me, like I, I fight all the time, you know, I, I feel normal when I'm out there and, and um, it's the, the way that the UFC presents it that really makes it different and bigger. Gotcha. Um, pile? <laughs> Sure. Can I add it to the pile? Sure. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, great questions. Thank you all so much for coming out. One final time, hey, Ronda Rousey. North Dakota to give that to you. Thank you. Went to school with your sister. The Harley Davidson booth. The Harley Davidson giveaway. A dream has come true.